This is TK Coleman, and I am not merely interested in creating a society where everyone feels free. I'm passionate about cultivating individuals who can figure out how to create freedom in any kind of society. We got enough people out there talking about policies and politicians all day long. I am interested in the philosophies and presuppositions that shape our view of the world, our view of self, and that dictate the choices we make in everyday life to either show up strong or to show up in a self-defeating manner. That's my wheelhouse, and that's what this show is about. So I'm not going to waste any time, y'all. We got to dive right in. Today's show is about bad things and bull runs. So let's hit you up with the first tweet. Faith doesn't say the bad things are fine. Faith says the bad things aren't final. Such a critical distinction there. For those of you who know me, who listen to me, may just be friends with me, you know that I adhere very strongly to a philosophy of self-determined optimism. What's the difference between self-determined optimism and what often passes for optimism? When many people think of optimism, they think of a word that is synonymous with irrational positivity. They think of looking at bad things and lying to yourself and others about what you see and pretending that it's actually a good thing. Oh, <laughs> I guess this is a really great situation, even though I feel like crap on the inside. Uh, I guess I'm an optimist, so I'm going to pretend to be happy. No, I don't believe in that. I believe that is a unhealthy way of living. And I don't think anybody should put that kind of pressure on themselves to always feel positive emotions or always speak positive words. Self-determined optimism is not when you choose to naively present your world as if everything is always fine. It is when you say, no matter how rough and tough things might be, I am committed to acting in accordance with my own passions, preferences, priorities, and principles, that I will never compromise my personal integrity or my commitment to well-being just because the things around me are bad. Some days I might be the lion, some days I might be the gazelle, but on all days I am going to run like hell. Never going to stop, never going to give up just because I'm under attack, just because things are going rough. I'm not going to accept that kind of programming. I'm not going to accept a doctrine of fear. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All right, so let's talk about this tweet. Faith doesn't say the bad things are fine. Faith says the bad things aren't final. When you look at something in life and what you're looking at is a really bad situation, there is great power in recognizing that truthfulness is not something that you need to run from. The ability to look at a bad situation and call it for what it is, is one of the most optimistic things you can do because that presupposes that you are powerful enough to handle the truth. When you run away from things that are unpleasant or difficult, that is not a sign of optimism. That's actually a sign of pessimism. It's a way of saying, oh my gosh, if I admit this to myself or others, it's going to completely destroy me and I won't be able to do anything about it. But the optimist says, I can afford, I can afford to look at things and say, wow, that is absolutely not the result we wanted. Wow, that is a terrible situation. This feels like hell. You can say that because you know that you have the power to cope with it, to process it in a constructive way. Now, I want you to think about something when it comes to this idea of recognizing that bad things aren't final. Because, all right, looks like I had a little hiccup there. All right. All right, I, I, I want to I make an observation about this idea of bad things not being final. For the optimist, when you look at a bad thing, you are honest about what you see, but you also recognize that there is more to reality than what you can see. This doesn't require mysticism. This doesn't require belief in the new age movement. This doesn't require belief in law of attraction. It just requires you to refuse to be irrational, to refuse to be so arrogant that you literally think the whole of reality is accessible to what you can observe in any given moment. The majority of things that are true in life are things that are not accessible to you at any given moment in time. This doesn't require mysticism. Even from a scientific point of view, have you ever used the dog whistle? You blow that dog whistle. Do you hear anything? No. 
Does something happen? Yes, there's something real beyond what you can detect with your senses. Or if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, the spectrum of physical light, we only see a narrow range of that. There's more than what we can see, right? So just because something exists doesn't mean that it is obvious. And the optimist is someone who refuses to equate that which is obvious with that which exists. Okay, so my problems are usually going to be more obvious than my possibilities. My possibilities take a little vision. They take a little imagination. They take knowledge of history. In order for me to have an adequate sense of possibility necessary to overcome my problems, I've got to know context. I've got to know about other people who have been through this. I've got to be able to look at what I'm going through from different vantage points and so on. That is what faith is. C.S. Lewis called it uh, called imagination the organ of faith. It's the ability to not limit your perception of reality to things that are obvious. The bad things, they are not fine, but they are also not final. So when you're having a bad day, you can say this day is terrible. This thing didn't go the way I wanted it to go. I'm really disappointed. I'm unhappy. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be okay. But I also recognize that there were aspects of my life that existed before this moment. And there are aspects of my life that can exist after this moment. And I'm going to choose to focus on that and try to move myself in the direction of a healthy reaction and response. So don't ever let anybody convince you that you need to be delusional in order to live a life of faith. It's not about denying what you see. It's about acknowledging that there is more to what's possible than what's staring you in the face. Let's go to tweet number two. Be your own bull run. All right, for those of you who may not know, a bull run refers to a condition in which the prices are going up in the market, right? When stock prices are going up, that's a bull run. And bull runs are very exciting. And we are living in the midst of some very powerful, intriguing bull runs. I have this class that I teach on Fridays for high school students. It's called um, Finance Fridays. And it's amazing, man, to see so many young people really interested in the stock market, really interested in cryptocurrency, because there are some exciting things happening in the world right now. Things are just going up and, 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 it's, and it's amazing to see it happen. And so this can lead to a mindset of everyone chasing after the next bull run, trying to figure out, hey, what's the next stock that's going to go up or what's the next cryptocurrency that's going to 10x and how can I get in on it? And I think that can be very exciting, especially when you have stories of a friend of a friend of a friend who knows somebody who bought, you know, some Dogecoin and then it went up 10x and then they made a bunch of money. That stuff can be really exciting. But it can also be self-defeating if it causes you to operate in a mode of being that is too focused on what is outside of yourself. Value is something that comes within. And we cannot always successfully predict what asset is going to rise or fall in price. But one thing that we can control is the investments that we make in ourselves. There are always things we can do to make ourselves more economically valuable, to make ourselves more useful to society, to make ourselves wiser, to make ourselves more competent, to make ourselves stronger, to make ourselves more helpful to the people that we have in our relationships, to make ourselves more valuable at our jobs. There are always things that we can do. And I'm not asking you to cease your excitement and your passion over these bull runs. I'm not asking you to never invest your money in the things that you're willing to take responsibility for investing in, but I am asking you to think about this idea of a bull run in a way that extends beyond someone else making you wealthy because of the activities that they do and the faith that you put on them, put in them. I want you to bet on yourself. I want you to put the same faith in yourself that you place in the stock market. I want you to be willing to bet on your potential in the same way that you're willing to bet on some cryptocurrency asset. And then you don't have to be angry about what someone else does and doesn't do. You don't have to be angry all the time when some thought leader or when some company doesn't handle its business and deliver in a way that increases the value of your portfolio. You can always feel like you are in control 
because you are focusing on the one thing over which you have the most control, and that is your own personal development. Enjoy the bull runs. Don't forget to be your own bull run. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Please, please hit subscribe. Please leave a comment letting me know what you thought or asking me any questions or letting me know if there's anything you want me to talk about in the future. Don't hesitate to share with a family and a friend. And above all things, create a great day because it is in your hands to do that. All right. Peace.